Hello and welcome back to another news video with me, Mioni. This time around we're checking out another post by Carrier of Light on the Final Fantasy XIV Reddit. Carrier of Light always comes through and translates and compiles all the translations of all of the various interviews that Yoshi P and the team have with various different Japanese media outlets. And in lieu of 5.1, there's quite a lot of interesting information that has been summarized after translation here, which I thought we'd go through as usual today so obviously there will be a link to this in the description so thank you once again to carrier of light for all of this hard work and compiling this wonderful thread so let's go and give that some thumbs up and spread some reddit karma so first of all let's talk about the msq so they say light and darkness will be the shared theme across not only the msq but for the contents of the patch some people might think that the start of the 5.1 storyline is slow compared to 5.0 but the hype will accelerate near the later half the outcome of the storyline of the 5.x series and beyond have almost been decided already which is a key point to note there so they're you know heavily planning ahead storyline wise which is good to know each patch will have a focus on different regions so i guess we'll be jumping around depending on what's happening in in different places yashida says when the patches approach the second half probably Probably meaning closer to 5.3 it says here in notes players might end up jumping over the border of Shadowbringers and going to the void question mark maybe not he laughs so I don't know there's a lot of speculation as to whether we'll be entering any of the other shards and obviously ultimately the the one that fell is the void so but we'll likely be seeing more storyline to do with that crystal tower overarching plotline. Emmett Selk being gone does not mean all of the ambitions of the Asians are gone, so players should look forward to what Elidibus does from here on. So we saw at the end of 5.0, a little bit of a spoiler I guess, that Elidibus was you know, heavily implied to be wanting to create maybe new warriors of light, inverted, inverted commas, so I'll have to see where exactly that goes. So they say, content in the future. The developers do not want to be obsessed with what worked or succeeded and their past glory. They will continue to try and deliver content by gathering all of the good parts of previous content. So I guess there's less dwelling on what worked and succeeded and more focusing on the good points and trying to bring those forward and, you know, making new experiences that are more rewarding and equally as fun or, or greater. They say players probably have a rough idea of the quote, the sequel to that content in the past should arrive in 5.x end quote, but there's quite a lot of content where that assumption doesn't apply or won't be right. So yeah, I have no idea what they're even referring to there. Maybe because we're seeing flashbacks, I don't know. I'm not even going to speculate on that. That's that's like a very loaded statement. In regards to Alexander Ultimate, which is the new Ultimate coming a week after 5.1 releases, probably everything is in it, so how many times are they going to transform? And how many times are they going to combine with each other? Question mark. So there's heavy implication there that there's obviously multiple stages to that. If you've ever seen an Ultimate fight, then you'll know they like to go, you know, go ham basically with lots of transitions and, you know, surprise mechanics that will just destroy you the next time. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to to watch on a live stream for sure if you're not taking part yourself. The developer's passion for robots are stuffed into this content, they say. The fight will be longer than Ultimate Weapon Ultimate. So that's a key point there. So they're going for that sort of long slog. Interesting. I, I, I can't wait to watch this, actually. They are shaving off and adjusting the content right now. And apparently during this interview, which took place quite, quite a long time ago, and they're going forwards and back with removing mechanics and adding mechanics. So I guess it was a lot of a toss of a coin in the air of which ones they wanted to put in and where they wanted to put them in and stuff like that. So it's cool that they have all of these ideas and they're trying to cram them in. So we'll see what kind of fight that creates, whether it will be just absolutely insane or if it will be as predictable as some of the others no doubt have become when you look at people who organize these raids. The developer's intention and goal when creating this content is 
as long as one party can clear it, we'll be fine. So that's a good mentality if you think about it. So at least they're focusing on, you know, at least somebody can do it, then we know we've done something. If it's possible and it's been proven to be done, then we'll be good without patching it. So that's that's a good mentality, especially when the hardcore sort of players in the game, this is their sort of content specifically, you don't want it to be dumbed down just because, you know, not many people have cleared it. So that's a quite a breath of fresh air, I think you'll agree, from games like World of Warcraft, where everything immediately gets dumbed down the week afterwards. A lot of players are nice enough to stream the content, so Yoshida wants the actual challengers and viewers to scream together as they progress, and no doubt we will. The direction they went with is closer to Bahamut Ultimate, i.e. Ultimate Coil of Bahamut. The Alexander fight was designed by someone who watched Sudo and Yokozawa create the previous two Ultimate fights, so I guess that's the where you get the inspiration for this fight, how they've iterated on that design and, you know, maybe made it even better. The rewards will be weapons that will stand out instantly with a different effect or animation to it. They also have a title as a reward. They did previously talk about this and they don't want to give any information about that away, but I'm sure the weapons are going to be very flashy and colourful and I'm sure the title is going to be something that everybody wants. So this is a bit about your hard dark apocalypse. The copied factory exists on the first, and the reason why it's located there will be revealed in the second set. So 5.3 or 5.5 and beyond. So bear in mind, this is an alliance raid, so we have multiple parts of this, so multiple raids, and this is only the first one. So we're not going to get too much information on why the copied factory is there in this 5.1 iteration, but... Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. The Yorha raid should leave a scratch mark that is a little different to Nier. So I guess they're saying that it's like like Nier, but not quite near so i guess that's the 14 compromise i'm not really sure they say it should be easier than the return to ivalis raids but a lot of people died during the tests it's definitely easier than orbon the final raid of ivalis and the near raids will end up being about the same difficulty as rabanasta the first ivalis raid this is the introduction to the near raid so they nerfed some of the debuffs after some of the testing and as they thought it would be too hard However, they will throw consecutive mechanics at the players that they have never seen before, and players might be overwhelmed. So, I guess this is going to be like Numbers Boss 2.0? Who knows? Can it be really as challenging as that to some of the members of this community? That's up in the air at this point. All Yoshida can say is, look around you and watch out. Oh, goodness. Uh, I don't know what to expect now. The rewards will include what players expect from a near raid and both genders can wear it so it'll look pretty powerful when a male wears it so uh yeah there's lots of dots there so i would imagine 2p or 2b's dress is a non-gender locked outfit you heard it here first i cannot wait to try that on and take some pictures and definitely to see that on some male characters that's uh that's gonna be interesting for sure so to go on to job adjustments here, and they only mention Samurai, Ninja, Summoner, and Bard, um, so we'll only cover those. They say, Samurai, since you can get Meditate stacks from other actions, Shoha will be in your normal rotation. The Meditate stacks have been renamed to Ken Atsu stacks. Carrier of Light says roughly translates to Blade Pressure. If they released it without adjustments, Samurais would be too strong, so they rebalanced it. Ninjas, the core of the job hasn't changed, and they left the system where you activate a ninjutsu by pressing the right mudras. And the speed and frequency you can press your mudras haven't changed, so you should be able to have a smooth time with no stress and summoner the current summoner makes it hard to feel accomplished so they improved on the play feel and made it easier to understand they will try to continue to adjust what they can during a patch cycle instead of an expansion where they can totally rebuild it the synergy the bards can provide with their songs are so 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 if you didn't know about this the songs are coming back to bards if you were you know 
sad about that going away in Shadowbringers. They are coming back. You get your, your synergy back from those songs. It says here, the player's opinion on bards having a party synergy or not is divided, but Yoshida personally thinks the 5.1 bard landed on a balanced spot. So I guess it's the best of both worlds. If players want even more synergy for bard, like in the 4.x series, they would have to nerf bard's personal damage to a dancer's level. And there's also an etc part to the job changes the dps role as a whole got damage adjustments as we've seen from the patch notes there's tons of potency increases for across the board various jobs will get their potency numbers adjusted and astrologians nocturnal sect will be buffed so if you're worried about that falling in line nocturnal is getting a buff in regards to Hades Extreme, as a whole fight, it's almost the same difficulty as Shinryu Extreme, and those players who aren't really good with do A damage during B should find this fight easy. Instead, this time they organize some mechanics with a different style, and players who aren't good with those types of mechanics might have trouble beating the fight. Yoshida was able to clear it on his second try after hearing all of the explanations from the developers. He did want to have a word with the developers as a black mage though so you would imagine there's a lot of movement in this fight so yeah enjoy that one the reward will be weapons but the item level will not be higher than the eden savage weapon the fight is longer than the usual extreme fights so you will actually be given two totems when you clear there is also one housing related item but those who are blessed by the light might feel awkward placing it in their house and it says in brackets here zodiac statue so yeah as you've seen probably from there you can see there's a massive statue that hades is wielding in one of those pieces of artwork so um, yeah presumably that's what we're getting for our house in regards to blue mage the blue mage log is extremely fun they say and has various objectives such as clear forward and extreme with eight blue mages and you get to play old content from different perspectives figuring out and researching which combination of blue magic you want for each task is fun there are rewards for the Blue Mage logs, and they want to provide a variety of rewards in the future. So, a variety of rewards. That probably means hairstyles, glamour, and mounts, and minions, is it? So, we'll be probably forced to do some Blue Mage this time around. They will be adding new magic that changes your stance. He wants you to imagine finding a tank and healer and copying their abilities and capabilities... And the term used here isn't the ability as in abilities each job has, but more along the lines of capabilities. So I guess you'll be able to, you know, be a tank blue mage and a healer blue mage. That'll be interesting. Level 5 death will finally be added and you can kill bosses as soon as you enter the boss arena. He didn't say all bosses, however, so I guess we'll be able to just go in nuke some bosses if we want to the learning system itself has been adjusted and you almost have an 100 percent chance of learning a spell if you do the content synced so i guess they're really pushing you to not have to grind so much but perhaps just see the ability and you know kill it synced if you do it unsynced i guess the, you've still got that rng of you getting it or not in terms of the Beast Tribe quests, the Beast Tribe quests in the 5.x series will be basically the same as the previous ones, but they will probably only have one Beast Tribe for battle classes this time. Since they receive player feedback from a certain someone, they want to add the Crafter and Gatherer Beast Tribe quest a little earlier this time along, and I think a lot of people will be thankful for that. It always helps out immensely to get your Crafters and Gatherers up, and waiting till near the expansion always kind of you know sucks the fun out of it a little bit for some people so trusts in the new instance dungeon you can enter the grand cosmos dungeon with your trusts when you enter for the first time via the msq you can enter with the trust regardless of their current level but you will actually need to have them at the right level after your first clear so you still need to level those up they won't be adding any new trust this time around rahatia isn't a new trust because you had him on your first run of the level 71 dungeon 
and presumably he's making a return for this dungeon. In regards to the new frontline, the Onsal Hakaya, the developers had a lot of fun testing the new frontlines. They think the players who enjoyed Seal Rock will have an easy time getting into this mode. Well, basically because it's the same thing, only you don't have to keep capping areas, and there's a lot of focus on killing on the battlefield. This new map will be released in patch 5.14, so I don't know how many weeks that is after the launch of 5.1, um, maybe two, maybe more, who knows. And then one of the last sections on this is about the Ishgard restoration. They'll be adding the Firmament District, which is also called the Azure Skies District in Japanese, as a new area. Players will join the restoration led by House Halianart. The flow of the content starts by checking the restoration board, which shows you what you have to do in the current phase. You will personally gather collectibles and hand them in. Each world and server has their own and different progression, so the more people that join, the faster Ishgard will be restored. Patch 5.1 alone has several stages to the restoration, and when you reach the limit to one of those stages, a fate-ish event for gatherers and crafters will occur. This fate will occur multiple times, as long as you meet the conditions every time, but it is balanced to where you need quite a lot of participants to clear it. They do have a just-in-case bailout ready for when the fate continues to fail over and over again but for the most part you'll need lots of players to take part in that 5.1's Ishgard restoration focuses on creating the base camp for future stages. You'll get tickets as a reward for your turn-ins, and there are items you can obtain by trading them in. The experience you gain from these turn-ins are very juicy too, they say. You can visit other servers and help them out. That's a big point that they've highlighted here. So you can actually affect other servers' progression. You can go there and take part in their activities. So that'll be interesting to see. The ranking system, Diadem Reborn, oh my goodness, it's really called Diadem Reborn, and the proper actual restoration or building of Ishgard will begin in patch 5.2. Hashtag Diadem Reborn, no thanks. After the Disciple of Hand and Land rework is done, they are planning to add highly difficult recipes which you can also turn in and helps you be in the top number of this ranking board so that's pretty much all the information we have on the ishgard restoration yet it's quite interesting i'm looking forward to the fate system it's fun that we can join in on other servers though it remains to be seen how that's going to work and apparently ps5 version is a last point here that we should probably cover they are positively considering releasing a playstation 5 version of final fantasy 14 but it doesn't mean that ps4 players will suddenly be able to adjust everything just like the pc version from the start even if they do release a ps5 version the first release will be a normal playable edition and then they will add ps5 specific features and functions that live up to its graphics and other capabilities in future patches so there is going to be a ps5 version i think that's the biggest thing you can take from this ps5 what that's next year so yeah i guess uh, i guess technology is improving in regards to the console experience for final fantasy 14 either way thank you once again to carrier of light for compiling this and all of the translation on this reddit thread go and check this out in the description give them some love and i'll see you all next time